Welcome to AI for a Better World. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Nick Bostrom, a distinguished philosopher and the founding director of the Future of Humanity Institute at Oxford University. Nick's new book, Deep Utopia, Life and Meaning in a Solved World, delves into profound questions about the future of humanity in the face of advancing technology. It's my pleasure to welcome Nick to our discussion today. Nick, welcome. Glad to be here. Nick, as we look towards the future, there's immense potential for AI to tackle pressing global challenges. Could you elaborate on how AI might be harnessed to address issues such as climate change, healthcare, or poverty? Yeah, I think AI is really a general purpose technology. So one shouldn't think too much about which particular area does it have applications in, but more as broadly the attempt to mechanize cognition, just as we've mechanized a lot of physical labor with the invention of the steam engine and internal combustion. And if you reflect on, on the wide range of tasks for which thinking uh, can be useful, then you sort of begin to appreciate the, the width of the potential areas where AI could be applied. I think, um, if we are talking about some of the different application domains that you mentioned, AIs will be useful in material science and for trying to help scientists make progress on clean energy research. We are developing better modeling systems for uh, analyzing molecular systems. And you could imagine that being used for the next generation of solar cell or for studying fusion containment. Uh, there are also sort of more uh, low key applications behind the scenes where AI can make various processes more efficient. The main thing to be cautious about is to over index on what AI is today and what it can do now. It's very much a moving target. And so, yes, there are a bunch of applications we can see from you know, ChatGPT4 and other systems today, but remember just three or four years ago, how much more primitive the AI was we had then was than what we have today. And so similarly, uh, you know, a few years into the future, uh, current AI systems will seem kind of stone age. As technology reshapes our world, you know, what would you say to global education systems um, who need to foster critical thinking, adaptability, digital li literacy, among other skills among students? How can we ensure they're equipped to navigate the challenges ahead? What's your message for educators? Yeah, well, I mean, I think what you said there is a good start. Um, I would also probably encourage educators to start integrating and using um, and allowing these AI tools, either in the classroom or for, for homework, like to design the homework such that just because you have an AI, it doesn't mean you don't have to put any effort yourself, but designing assignments where you can use these tools and then also have to combine that with some human effort to produce something. So rather than having one teacher telling a class of 30 students how to do something or like do some mathematics thing, like you could have systems that understand precisely where each student is at, what, what they are stuck at, what they get wrong, and then create personalized explanations to help them overcome hurdles. This will require taking this technology and actually adapting it and developing specific applications for education. But I think there seems to be great potential there. But then on top of that, I don't, I don't know exactly how you do it because I've never been in any sort of school classroom as a teacher, but encouraging students to take more personal responsibility for their education and intellectual maturation. I think it's a hard thing to achieve, but once you do achieve that, once the person itself becomes invested in learning and expanding the frontiers and picking up new skills, then, I mean, almost your job as a teacher is like 90% done at that point. You can still offer some guidance, but it makes it so much easier if the child itself kind of wants to do this and is looking actively for opportunities, not just to pass the exam in the school, but to acquire skills and knowledge and concepts that, that will help them live better lives. What strategies or policies do you believe decision makers can implement to ensure that the benefits of technological progress reach all members of society, regardless of their background or location? Yeah, I think education is a great place to begin with this and making sure that everybody has access to a high quality education. And in particular, if we're talking about AI, being introduced to these AI systems. And it will be a moving target. Like, so, you know, in the past, 
being able to code would be sort of the key that unlocks a lot of IT jobs or general like, but increasingly we will be communicating with these systems through natural language. I still think though that you will be able to make better use of them if you have some understanding of what is going on behind the screen and the underlying principles that make this work. You will just have more confidence, uh, better ability to assess the limitations of what they can do. So giving everybody a chance to, to kind of be exposed to some of that would be a good start. More broadly, and this of course taps into wider political and economic policy issues, but like making sure that if AI technology starts to automate away a lot of human jobs, then the people who get displaced by this technology have a social safety net, including obviously some source of economic support and maybe in the fullness of time moving towards some universal basic income. But then on top of that, there will be a need to develop communities that because like one of the things that happen if you lose your job is like maybe you don't have enough money, but that's only a part of it. It's also like for many people means social isolation and a sense of failure. And that sometimes is the bigger problem with unemployment. Imagine if this starts to happen to more and more people that there needs to be sort of more community organizations where you could develop shared activities, hobbies and hobby associations and clubs and, and all of that to sort of absorb all of these freed up human hours so that rather than each person sitting isolated in their own flat and not knowing what to do with themselves, they could participate in these other activities. And I'm sure governments can have some role in facilitating that, but it also needs to be a cultural thing that comes from, from the grassroots. As we contemplate the implications of a solved world and the transformative potential of AI, it's clear that society must be adept at keeping pace with technological change. How do you believe major institutions can proactively adjust their structures and policies to remain relevant? And I think knowledge is uh, probably a key ingredient that would apply for all institutions, like the people in the institution, if they know something about AI and what it can do and what equally important, what it cannot currently do. I think that makes it more likely that they can spot opportunities and see like a little bit ahead of time, perhaps how things will need to adapt, which, which tasks are no longer needed because they could easily be automated and what new opportunities to do more stuff. Thank you, Nick, for joining us today. Uh, an enlightening conversation. I learned so much from you. Um, I'm really enjoying your book. I'm going to wish you lots and lots of luck with it. I know it's going to do fabulously well. And we hope to speak with you again in the future. Well, th thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Today's podcast featured highlights from CM, Ruben's Planet Classroom interview with Nick Bostrom as part of the AI for a Better World series. For the full interview and other thought-provoking discussions, head over to Planet Classroom's YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe to the Planet Classroom podcast for more episodes exploring how AI is shaping the future. Until next time, keep exploring with us.